88% of people are deficient in this single molecule that is responsible for healthy neurotransmitters, lowering inflammation, sexual health, including erections for men, energy production, fat loss, and many more really important functions inside of the human body. This molecule is a gas called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide plays a crucial role for many physiological functions inside of your body. One of the main roles is that it's a gaseous signaling molecule that helps with vasodilation. Heart disease is the number one killer in the world with over 600,000 people dying from heart disease every year. And vasodilation, what that means, it actually opens up your blood vessels, which actually prevents heart disease and allows nutrients and oxygen to be delivered to every single cell inside of your body. Nitric oxide is produced by many cells inside of your body, including your immune system, your brain cells, and your endothelial cells, which are the cells lining your blood vessels. When we talk about anti-aging and fat loss and energy production, mitochondria is always in that conversation. We can make the case that disease is out there. Many of these conditions are linked to mitochondrial dysfunction. NO, nitric oxide, plays a crucial role with mitochondrial health as well. NO also protects the telomeres that are wrapping around your DNA, which protects your DNA from getting damaged, which essentially increases your lifespan. Nitric oxide plays a crucial role in recovery from injury, but also from exercise and working out. That's why they call it the holy grail of anti-aging medicine is this miracle molecule called NO. As far as inflammation goes, as it pertains to the immune system, it really helps with these senescent cells that we have inside of our body. Think of these as zombie cells that stick around too long, creating disease and even increasing our risk of cancer. When you have adequate amounts of nitric oxide, it modulates your immune system. And it does this by inhibiting the production of cytokines. You might've heard of the cytokine storm from what we just experienced the last few years and NO plays a big role in reducing that from happening. In addition, to reducing cytokines, it prevents the production of chemokines, which is also inflammatory to the immune system. Additionally, nitric oxide has a really powerful effect on your T regulatory cells, which is a big player in your immune system as well. In 1992, the Journal of Science called nitric oxide the molecule of the year. Another very important role of NO is it allows your cells to communicate with each other. Your body is this amazing orchestra, and this is called redox signaling, where your cells communicate with each other. Hormones need to attach the cells, nutrients, oxygen, et cetera, and NO plays a big role there. So imagine this. Let's say you have a best friend that lives down the street from you, and you're looking down your, out your window, and you notice there are some intruders that are about to enter your best friend's house. There is trouble a-brewing. What do you do? You call your friend. You text your friend, but let's say your communication system is blocked. What's gonna happen to your friend? Bad things are gonna happen when your communication systems are blocked. Same thing in your body. When your communication system is blocked because you don't have enough nitric oxide, bad things will happen inside of your body as well. Things will go wrong, and the most common symptoms of low levels of nitric oxide include the following. High blood pressure, weight gain, and the ability to lose weight, erectile dysfunction in men, and also for men waking up without morning wood, a big sign of low NO levels, Alzheimer's, dementia, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes, and many, many other symptoms that manifest after you have low levels of nitric oxide. But it's not all bad news. I asked the question, why are so many people deficient in nitric oxide? And right now, I'm going to share with you the top six causes of low nitric oxide levels and the solutions for each. Grab a pen and paper, let's start with number one. The first reason so many people are low in nitric oxide is from antiseptic mouthwash and toothpaste that contains fluoride. I've interviewed Dr. Nathan Bryan, who's a world-renowned nitric oxide researcher, a couple times on my Metabolic Freedom podcast. And he published research back in 2015 that shows when you use mouthwash, it kills the oral microbiome, the bacteria in your mouth responsible for producing nitric oxide. It completely shuts it down as soon as you finish mouthwashing. And when that happens, blood pressure goes up. And if you're a guy, erectile dysfunction occurs later on as well. And this dramatic effect can occur just days after using mouthwash. What's the solution? Stop using antiseptic mouthwash, make sure your toothpaste or mouthwash does not have fluoride, and swap it for healthy essential oil mouthwash or coconut pulling. I personally use the doTERRA On Guard mouthwash cyclically, and I'll put a link for that down below. As far as toothpaste go, my favorite is from Revitin, and I'll put a link for that down below. Just make sure it does not have fluoride 
and make sure your mouthwash is not scope, Listerine, etc. Those are problematic. Number two, a diet high in carbohydrates, especially carbohydrates. The average American consumes 300 to 400 grams of carbohydrates every day. That creates something called advanced glycation end products. And yes, the acronym for that is AGES because it's going to age you faster. Very, very accurate. Just like the standard American diet. It's a sad diet. And these AGES attach to your rages, meaning your receptor sites for advanced glycation end products. So the AGES make you rage and that's not a good thing. When you eat a diet high in carbohydrates and you're eating frequently, that leads to, of course, high levels of blood sugar, high levels of insulin. And when that happens, the nitric oxide synthase enzyme, which is responsible for your body producing nitric oxide. So it automatically shuts that off. So what would be a better diet for nitric oxide? Definitely a low carb keto diet. And we have a lot of videos on that here on this channel and intermittent fasting as well to lower those blood sugar and insulin levels. But I'm gonna share with you the top 10 foods for nitric oxide production. Write these down. Take it to your grocery store, eat these on a daily basis, and it's gonna allow your body to produce those amazing levels of nitric oxide. Number one, green leafy vegetables. And I know if you do something like a carnivore diet, you're not gonna eat these, but if you do eat green leafy vegetables, the best ones that produce nitric oxide in the body will be arugula and Swiss chard. Yeah, there's some research showing kale and spinach also help with that. Just not a fan of kale and spinach because of the high oxalate load, but arugula is one of my favorite Swiss chard as well. These are high in nitrates. Your body and the bacteria in your mouth convert nitrates to nitric oxide in the body. Super cool. These green leafy vegetables also contain other benefits, including vitamin C, vitamin K, which has been shown to support vascular health. The second food to consume are beets. Again, they're higher in oxalate, so it depends on how healthy your gut is, but beets and beetroot juice and beet tops as well help increase nitric oxide production in the body. It also helps with blood flow, exercise performance, sexual performance as well. The third food is garlic. Garlic contains a compound called allicin that has been shown to help with the immune system, but it also stimulates nitric oxide production inside of your body. It could also help relax and vasodilate those blood vessels, very important. So you can incorporate raw garlic or cooked garlic in your diet and that'll help with NO. The next food is citrus fruits, lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits. They're rich in vitamin C, obviously. And vitamin C is a cofactor for the enzyme that produces nitric oxide. So including citrus fruits in your diet can support nitric oxide synthesis and support cardiovascular health as well. I personally like to squeeze lemons and limes on my fatty proteins. It also helps the liver produce bile to break down the fat, bonus tip. Next we have pomegranate. Pomegranates are packed with antioxidants and polyphenols which have been shown to enhance nitric oxide production and also support endothelial function. Next, we have nuts and seeds. Walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds are a good source of arginine, which is an amino acid that serves as a precursor to nitric oxide synthesis. These foods can help boost nitric oxide in your body as soon as you consume them. Next, we have dark chocolate, 70% plus, contain high amounts of flavonoids that promote nitric oxide production and help with blood flow. Next, we have my favorite fruit, actually, watermelon. Watermelon is rich in citrulline, an amino acid that converts to arginine inside of the body, thus supporting nitric oxide production and cardiovascular health. Next, we have fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, sardines, anchovies. These contain a high amount of um, quality omega-3 fats, which are anti-inflammatory properties shown to support endothelial function, indirectly supporting nitric oxide function as well. And the last food for nitric oxide production is actually a drink, green tea. Now make sure it's a clean, organic source of green tea, but green tea and also oolong tea, by the way, contain a good amount of catechins. These polyphenolic compounds have been shown to increase nitric oxide production and improve vascular function. And here's a bonus tip. If you drink it on an empty stomach, there's some research showing it could actually help you burn belly fat. Win-win. Moving on to the third reason why NO levels are so low and what to do about it are actually proton pump inhibitors, antacids. People pop them like Skittles and there are big problems with taking proton pump inhibitors, antacids, Tums, etc. In 2015, studies showed that people who took proton pump inhibitors for three to five years had a 35% increase 
in heart attacks and strokes because of what it does to shut down nitric oxide production. They are extremely dangerous long-term. And if you're taking it for heartburn, usually the problem with heartburn is not too much acid. It's actually too little acid and a dysfunction with your LES, which is your lower esophageal sphincter. So we wanna strengthen that LES and actually build up acid and you can actually prevent acid reflux or get rid of it for good just by doing that. So what's the solution here? If you have acid reflux, taking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar before your meals could help build the acid back up. Getting into a parasympathetic state helps with that lower esophageal sphincter, the LES. That means relaxing, not eating on the go, practicing gratitude before you eat a meal. I call it vitamin G. And actually humming. Mm -hmm. Humming helps to activate that vagal tone, also helps with nitric oxide production, also helps with the LES. So before you eat your next meal, hum, maybe sing, practice gratitude, take apple cider vinegar, and that is the solution to acid reflux. Number four, so many people are chronic mouth breathers, myself included, for many, many years. And when you are breathing from your mouth the majority of the time, you are not allowing your nasal airways, your nasal passages to produce nitric oxide. Yes, nitric oxide is released in your nasal pathways when you breathe through your nose and breathe slowly. When you're breathing through your mouth, you're preventing that from happening, lowering your nitric oxide levels. So what's the solution? Just become aware of your breathing throughout the day. When you're watching TV, as you're watching this right now, check yourself. Are you breathing through your mouth? If you are, breathe through your nose, breathe slowly. I can tell you this, you could be conscious and aware throughout the day, but at night when you're sleeping, you're unconscious. So what do you do? I personally mouth tape at night. I know it sounds crazy, but I've been doing this for years. And if I miss a night where I don't mouth tape it, it affects my sleep because I'm just a chronic mouth breather and I do it when I sleep unless I'm mouth taping. And here's how you know if you're breathing through your mouth at night. You wake up in the morning and your mouth feels dry. That's not normal. That means you've been breathing in through your mouth throughout the whole night. You don't wanna do that. When you breathe through your nose throughout the whole night, that's an extraordinary amount of nitric oxide that's being produced. So I personally put a small little adhesive of tape from a company called Somnifix before bed and then I take it off in the morning and it forces me to breathe through my nostrils. I'll put a link for that company Company in the notes down below. And the next reason why our nitric oxide levels are so depleted is a sedentary lifestyle. And I know I'm saying that sitting on my chair right now, but I do get my 10,000 steps per day, which is your first tip. You've heard that sitting is the new smoking. It is so true. There are so many problems that occur when you sit for too long, and that includes depletion of nitric oxide levels. But when you move and do these specific exercises I'm gonna share with you in a second, what an amazing way to ramp up nitric oxide production. So number one, aim to get about 10,000 steps per day, which I typically do. When you're going grocery shopping or at the shopping mall and you're looking for the closest parking spot, forget about that. Park far and walk. Take the stairs in your building instead of the elevators. Get those steps, walk your dog a little bit longer, get those steps. But as far as exercises go, the exercises that have been proven to get you the biggest bang for your buck for nitric oxide production is going to be sprinting, weightlifting, and also aerobic training. So yeah, sprint a couple times per week, lift weights a couple times per week, and then get some aerobic training, some, some cardio going 20 to 30 minutes, two to three times per week, and you'll boost your nitric oxide levels dramatically that week as well. And the next reason why nitric oxide levels are so depleted are because of statins. This might be controversial, and I know, we've been taught. Cholesterol is the boogeyman, LDL is the boogeyman. Look, we have debunked that, the research is clear. Cholesterol is vital for nitric oxide. Cholesterol is vital for hormones, for brain health, for liver function, for breaking down fat. Cholesterol is not the boogeyman we were taught to believe, and there's a condition that I call lipophobia, the fear of dietary fat based off of 50 plus years of propaganda and misinformation. Look, your body loves fat. Your cell membranes are made up of fat. And Dr. Nathan Bryan, same researcher I spoke about earlier, he shared that if your total cholesterol levels are below 200, it actually blocks nitric oxide from binding to those cells, lowering nitric oxide production. Hmm. Not only that, studies show that most people have a heart attack or a stroke, cardiovascular disease with normal to low cholesterol than high cholesterol. You see, God made cholesterol. Your body loves cholesterol and good amounts of cholesterol allow your body to produce nitric oxide. Statins disrupt that and they don't want you to know the truth. The statin industry made $15.4 billion last year. So why would they want you to know this? My goal is to strip the power away from big pharma, big food, big gov and give it to you. And that's what we're doing here on this YouTube channel. So eat the fat, saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, 
eat the eggs with the yolk, eat the grass-fed butter. That's actually going to help you tremendously, not just with nitric oxide levels, with burning fat, brain function, cardiovascular health. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Lastly, there are many supplements out there on nitric oxide, different powders, different, most of it is crap. And I've done a lot of research. The one I personally use is from Dr. Nathan Bryan. It's called N101. Uh, it's a, lo a lozenge that you just put in your mouth, let it dissolve, and it right away increases nitric oxide levels. And if you have high blood pressure, it lowers it. I've seen that happen right away with my students. If you enjoyed the tips in this video, I think you're gonna love this next video right here, which is the full interview I did with Dr. Nathan Bryan. It's a masterclass all about nitric oxide. It controls cellular respiration, oxygen delivery to every cell in the body, mitochondrial function, regulates the length of your telomeres, which tells our own stem cells to mobilize and differentiate. It's really the holy grail kind of anti-aging medicine and longevity.